What's up everybody? So we're out in the shop with another Shop Top Tuesday and in this episode we are focusing on the handle scales for the Shop Top Tuesday build knife. Now in this episode we're going to focus more on the shaping of the handle. Not so much the hand sanding aspect of it because I'm going to be working on that next week and it's kind of a it needs to be its own video the hand sanding side because there's a lot that goes into that and things that you need to focus on and I really want to break that part down. Um, if you want to watch a video leading up to that, I would suggest Aaron from Ailey Knives. He released a video talking about hand sanding and different things to think about whenever you're actually working on your handles. I'm going to leave a link for that in the description below because I'm going to kind of piggyback on his video just a little bit but with a few different talking points than what he hit on. Uh, but I think that that is an awesome video and I think y'all should really go check it out. So I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Go check it out. Now for this one, like I said, we're going to focus more on the like profiling and ergonomics of the handle. And I'm going to show y'all one of the easiest ways to make a really comfortable handle without it being too daunting, too scary because of the amount of material that we're going to be removing. So when it comes to this, the whole point behind your ergonomics or your your handle feel is you want to be the knife that is the go-to knife that people use. They purchase a knife from you, you want them to compare all other knives to your knife. And for your knife to to be the you know the primary one that they want to use like they grab yours and go, oh, I love that. And then they fill some other knife and they go, man, that's awesome, but it's not as cool as so-and-so's knife that I absolutely love. A lot of that comes to uh, ergonomics and how they're going to actually hold your knife, different things like that. But one of my biggest things that I see whenever I'm looking at newer knife makers' handles is a lot of them leave their handles very chunky, very blocky, because they're either afraid to remove a bunch of material or they've watched other videos and people do the, you know, they put some big old scales like this on there and then they take and they just do a 45 on each edge and then they kind of round it a little bit. They might do a little bit of contouring, try a Coke bottle handle out a little bit, but they leave the scales very thick through the body there. Most pocket knives, are only as thick as one side of these scales. And then you leave it this thick and you've got almost three pocket knives wide in your handle. And if you're wanting somebody to carry your knife or EDC your knife or you know it be their go-to knife, you need to be able to thin that out a little bit and make it to where it is super comfortable. Now the it's not saying that the people who do the 45 degree angle all the way around and do a little bit of sanding are doing the wrong thing they're fine that knife is probably going to be comfortable but it, a lot of that happens because people are afraid to go through and do all the contouring because you see people do the coke bottle handles and it's just a lot of stuff going on what we're going to focus on today is the easiest way to contour it without it being something crazy so we're going to do a little bit of marking on the knife or on the handle so that we can actually see exactly where we need to go when it comes to grinding and things like that. But the overall way that we're going to hold the knife is not going to be something super crazy. So let's go to the workbench. Let's get this thing marked out for what we're going to grind to. And then we'll get on the 2x72. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our marker and we're going to mark all the way around the scales here to give us a little guideline. We're going to go all the way around. And then repeat that on both sides. So that goes all the way around. And I'll tell you why that's important when we get to the 2x72. So I don't tend to do the guidelines myself because I'm pretty good at seeing exactly where I need to grind to and mimicking it on both sides. 
but this is a good habit for y'all to go ahead and start with until y'all get to that point. Now with this particular handle shape right here, a lot of people would do a coke bottle handle because that gives you a good flare at the end here. I'm not going to do that with this one. We're going to do a simple profile that has a nice rounded contour on the side all the way down and then we'll do just a little bit of contouring just on the belly and not even really on the spine. So we're going to start off with a used 36 grit belt here. This is one of the shredder belts. We're going to end up coming in and we're just going to rock it until we actually round all the way to here. So we're not going to be grinding all the way back to this point right here on the face just yet. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to grind and round the scales until we end up meeting those lines and then we'll go from there. So for right now, we just need to get on here and start rounding it. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we're looking at it now, we can actually see that we've rounded it in the front, the back, all that. So we've just contoured it all the way to our line. And then this, of course, isn't going to follow the line 100% because we've got this indention right here. If this was straight, this area would have been contoured all the way through it. Same thing with this. So you see how this, it goes all the way down to the line right there because this is a lot straighter. But whenever you get these curves, all this material that would be ground here is gone. So it's not going to meet that. This is where we're going to end up contouring in the belly to be able to meet those lines. But for right now, we've already thinned it out a little bit and we got a more ergonomic knife just from rounding this. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go through and I'm going to match the roundedness that we have back here where it's just a subtle. I'm going to match that up front because right now I've kind of got a little bit of a point right here and it needs to be round like that. So we're going to do that first. And all I'm going to be doing to, to check that out is I'm going to be watching it from the top and I'm going to round it to match it. Okay, so now you can see we've rounded it. I've barely removed any meat from here. This is still pretty flat right here. But now we've rounded the front and the back to pretty much match. Now typically I would go through and even remove a little bit more from here, but I think that overall once we get this side shaped to match and then we start contouring the belly, I think that that's going to be just fine for a thickness. So we're going to go ahead and make this match that side. So now we've got them matching. That's what the reference lines definitely help with going all the way down here. Instead of just marking the corners where we're going to grind to, you can actually see how close you're getting all the way around here. But now we've ground everything, thinned the handle out in the process took off a lot of the material in the bulk and it's starting to get more comfortable but as we start thinning out the main area here it's going to get even more comfortable 
And then of course we are still going to round over these hard edges right here. But it's going to thin out quite a bit whenever we start removing this material. Because remember, if this was a straight line from here to here, then it would be the same thickness all the way through. But right now, because this material is removed, this area is way broader than this area here. And whenever we start contouring all this, it's going to pull it in, thin out a lot of the material through the belly, which is going to make it more comfortable for a hand to go around. You know, your pinky is like your smallest finger. You don't want that going across the widest part of this handle here. You want to narrow it out quite a bit because you want your finger to wrap around there and be comfortable. Same thing with your index finger through here. You know, length of your fingers, those areas need to be a little bit narrower because of the where they're going to sit. You see where your knuckles are? So just think about stuff like that whenever you're starting to shape these. But we're going to end up contouring this a little bit more. But before I do that, I'm just going to round these two edges over just by simply coming across and rounding them over just a little bit. Nothing too complicated, we're just knocking the edge down. Okay, so now when it comes to contouring these two areas, all we're going to do is just grind in a little bit on them. This is the part where you're going to have to get a little bit more into this little motion here, but I'm going to show you all one of the easiest ways to get this contoured right here, again, without it feeling like you've got to do some crazy stuff on your 2x72 with hand movements and motions and all of that so all we're gonna do just smooth this out get a little transition and then we're gonna do a lot of the other work on the oscillating spindle sander which removes material way slower you know this 2x72 is of course gonna take material off really fast which is why it's kinda of scary to use this to shape material but this is going to be a real simple thing to do and we're just taking just enough off to make it easier for the spindle sander part of this process so right now all we've done was just use this motion that's it nothing too crazy we've just been spinning it spinning it spinning it kind of rounding it a little bit so that it's not super blocky and square and now we're going to just get some contouring so let's do that. Okay, so I don't want y'all to think that me using this top wheel or the bottom wheel is a very complicated thing. All we're using that for is just to remove a bunch of material and still be able to get into the, the shape here. This isn't a small wheel or anything like that. And basically all I'm doing is just rocking it back and forth. Every once in a while I'll bring it up, get a little bit extra there. We're not really going too far up front. We'll use the uh, oscillating spindle sander to get up in here. So we're not taking material accidentally off of our uh, Ricasso little sharpening choil area. So we'll do all of this finished stuff right here on the spindle sander. But removing a bunch of this bulk right here 
with this little contact wheel is a lot easier and being able to get inside this you know we're not trying to do a coke bottle handle so we're not removing a ton from this little area we're just contouring the belly and all it takes is a little bit of this just to make sure you get inside there and that's going to give you a more comfortable area for your pinky to come across now what we got to do is just kind of match up this side to this side right here so this is where we're at so far before we start working on the oscillating spindle sander. Now this is the same thing as if you were going to use a small wool attachment or a sanding drum on your drill press. The only difference between this and some of those other things is you have a little bit more height surface area with this right here plus this actually goes up and down so you hit a new part of the sanding drum as you're going through this. Now. What we're going to be focusing on for this is getting into these little tighter areas right here. And of course you can use a bunch of different thicknesses of drums really depending on what you're trying to accomplish here all the way down to these really tiny ones. So I'm going to use one that corresponds best with the internal contour of my smallest area which is this area right here so that I can end up curving into this. What I'm going to be focusing on is just rounding over everything. Everywhere where you have a nice hard edge, I'm going to round that over and then I'm going to contour just a little bit in this area and kind of soften this area where I contoured already with the 2x72 and we're going to go from there. And this is a 80 grit drum right here. So just to give you all another little idea of what I'm doing here, all I'm trying to do is just soften all these hard edges like I was talking about this up here. So you'll see me fill it a lot. I'm going to fill it until it feels really comfortable. I've got another hard edge right here. I've already started getting rid of it over here. So I'm just trying to get rid of these so that I have nice smooth filling lines all the way through here before we go into hand sanding. So we're trying to get rid of as much of that as possible. Whatever we don't get rid of, we'll be able to do with hand sanding, but I'm gonna get rid of as much of that as we can. And right now, we're not trying to go back and recontour any of this. We're just trying to smooth as much of this stuff out as we can. Whenever we get up here, I will be contouring though. But for right now, I'm just gonna go through, smooth the rest of this out real quick. So now that we got this smoothed out all through here, now we're going to focus on the contouring in here. And all I'm going to do is a real simple contour just like I did here. We're just going to round it over and set a little notch in here and then we're going to smooth out from there, feather it out. So you're going to see that I'm just going to put a notch almost in this little area where I know my finger is going to sit and then round it out from there. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we've got our little groove in here. And I just kind of evened it up with this little pin 
right here on both sides. So now that we got that exactly where I want it, I'm just going to start feathering it back and blending it into this little area back here. All we're going to be doing is going into the groove and then just working our way back. Again, we're not putting a ton of pressure on this. We're letting the, the sandpaper do its job and it's going to remove as fast as it needs to. So we're just going to be coming in here and then feathering it back, then feathering it forward. And that way we'll start rounding over any of those sharp edges like I was talking about a minute ago. Okay, so now you can see we've got smooth transitions all the way through here. Look from the back side here. Got a nice contour. And so far, all we've done was we rounded to get this round right here and this right here. So we rounded and then we got on our contact wheel and we rounded, moved it back forth a little bit, but we we're just focusing on rounding. And then on here, just rounding, and then just softening up those hard lines. So it's just working it like this, or like this, <laughs> on the 2x72, and then still just working it like this, just to get our contour where we want it, so that we have a nice comfortable handle and now you can see my hand fits around this handle very well fingers kind of touch right here that is a comfortable handle my pinky is comfortable on there index finger is comfortable I got a good grip on it I'm not worried about it coming out of my hand and I don't have any hot spots on this the only hot spots I have right now or on the opposite side that I haven't matched up to this. So this little area here, that's the only spot that I feel anything uncomfortable. So now we're going to go ahead, even this out to match this, and call it done there. Now for the last little bit, we got to go ahead and kind of round off this rear end. Now we could leave it how it is right there if we wanted to, but I want to take a little bit of this bulk off of it. We're going to utilize those same lines that we drew earlier, and we are just going to grind to those. Almost a 45 degree angle if you want to call it that, and we're just going to grind to it. That way we can kind of round this little end off a little bit, and remove just a little bit of material. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and call this one right here. So this is where we're at. We got our nice, smoothed out, contoured handle. Going to match this really well. Of course, we are going to be bringing it up to our higher finish with our sanding. But really like how this turned out. And again, this is something that is not hard to replicate. All we did was simple movements and we just utilized the 2x72 and the spindle sander with one size drum and the whole point behind this is to get y'all comfortable with doing simple movements on your grinders and things like that and realizing that you don't have to get in there and put a ton of pressure into it because these belts are meant to do what they do you do not have to put a lot of force behind it. Just let the belt do its job, remove the material, take your time, and just do simple movements 
until you get used to doing these things and letting the belt do its job by just slowly working it and getting comfortable with what your machines do you know all we did was shaped it with the 2x72 and then with the spindle sander we just went and smoothed those edges light pressure light pressure light pressure smooth the edges rounded everything over you don't have to have a spindle sander and you do not have to have a 2x72 the top wheel on your 1x30 works just the same a drum attachment that you can get from Harbor Freight can go into your drill press you do the same exact thing just light pressure let the actual grits do their job and then you go from a person who is doing those really blocky square handles with just the 45 to something that's got nice contour that is nice and rounded that fits exactly how your hands supposed to fit it you know our hands aren't square so trying to put them around squares isn't exactly where it's at but simple contours with simple movements there you go y'all tell me what y'all think about that so far I think it's turned out pretty cool but I'm interested to know what y'all think and if this video helped you out let me know if there's something that you would have changed on this let me know that's what the comment section's for but guys that's the end of this one if y'all would give this video a thumbs up share this video or one of my other videos if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe to the channel because next week we're doing the hand sanding on this we're going to get into the nitty gritty of hand sanding thank y'all for coming by thank y'all for spending your time with me y'all have an amazing day y'all stay safe out there i'll catch y'all next time